so Jason, this is your this is your wheelhouse. And lo and behold, if anyone listening to this, if you ever run a business, you know that stuff like this happens all the time. You create something, and then other things that end up like people get creative with it, and then there are other uses which occur. Right. One which we weren't even aware of. Yes. And what we found is that Tartle could be used as the only place to ethically source leads. People are like, ethically source leads? What does that mean? So let's talk about this. When you get a phone call from a telemarketer or what have you or a college or university, I don't care what it is, okay? Someone has captured your data somewhere and then sold it to some other person so that that person can call you and give you a product or service. First of all, you don't know where that stuff's gone. You had no idea when it left. You really don't remember giving away your consent to do so. Most of the time you didn't. Oh, and you weren't paid to be a part of the process. Only the person that sold your information got the money. So not only did you lose out on that, someone's also trying to force a product or service down your throat. So what if we change that paradigm? What if we made it so that, hey, let's involve you in the leads process. Mm. You know you're going to get contacted, but you make the choice whether or not you want to by sharing your data that has the info that these people who want to sell a product or service that they feel is actually beneficial to you because you fit their profile. Okay, that makes sense. And they'll pay you for that information. So rather than paying them some some one-off place to do this, they can just pay you as a Tartle user directly for sharing that with them. Well, I, I think now, especially uh, as we're going into situation where people are staying at home more and you have, you know, on the marketing side of things, there's only one reason to have a website. You get, a lot of people get off of this and it's so funny. Your website's just a big CTA call to action. There's nothing more than that. That's all it does. And the lifeblood of a lot of businesses, especially now, because mm-hmm. people are, have gone online 400%. People are online doing research, looking up things, deciding to make a purchase. And they're willing to even take large ticketed items mm-hmm. and do everything online. Correct. You know, we're realizing this, you know, in the automotive industry, real estate, Zillow, the things that are happening. So I, I think it's really important that companies understand wh- whether you're a large business, a medium business, small business, it does not matter. This is for everyone. Yeah. Leads are your life source. It is the lungs to your business. Otherwise, you're, you're walking around being like, who do I talk to? Yes. Why didn't you just establish a relationship immediately yes. with those people? qualify that lead instantaneously, ethically source the info and know that you don't have the liability because you actually got consent for the acquisition of it. It didn't come from some black box or some other system. Someone's like, yeah, you know, we got these leads. We scraped some things online. It's not about scraping anymore. Let me go talk to you. What is it you really need? Well, it also discourages, I mean, down the road, whether you're VPSLs or whatever it may be, you're hearing from the boots on the ground, mm-hmm. the leads aren't good. We only close like less than 10% of them. You know, so what happens when you have a hundred leads come in and that salesperson looks in the CRM and they're saying, these are no good, only 10% of them. So what, what type of follow-up are you getting compared to an ethically sourced lead? Yeah. And this is where I want people to understand why drive it home. This is where, I, why Tartle leads are the cart with the gold in it. <laughs> You talking about Philip the Second? Yes. With his quote? Yes. Explain this so people. Know. Oh, so let's explain Jason's metaphor. Assume your customer has this massive wall, which they do. Yes. Nobody wants to get sold shit ever. They want to. They want to sell themselves. Okay. Philip the Second had a great, a great quote. He said, "I don't care how big the wall is. If I show up with a cart pulled by horses and that cart's filled with gold, I can go through any wall." That's what's going on. This data is that gold. You show up to them knowing precisely what this individual wants and needs. And you can meet them where they are. Well, Tartle leads are the future just simply based off of not only, and and we'll get specifically why they're gold, because I think this is really important, but I want to kind of hammer the ethical part. There's a reason why if the largest tech companies in the world are having to go before politicians and explain themselves, do you not think your local governments would come to you as a business and say, how did you get this person's information? Where is this person's information coming from? Yeah. Why are you, I mean, over and over and over again, you're seeing a crackdown on this. Correct. Um, We just had a conversation yesterday um, with online schools. Yep. And and the situation, and they've created a law 
they have a name for it. I forgot what the FERPA. Name is. Yeah, they've created a law to make sure that the data, the information that they receive in, that that information doesn't go out. Doesn't go out in a, in a simplified version. But we have to understand the future data. Data four point World Economic Forum said data is the thing. Yep, coming out. I mean, it, data four point is it. It's the backbone of the future. It, the more we're creating tons of data, mm-hmm. you need to ethically source that data. How does that work for you getting a lead? And that that that's something that I want you to respond to because the ethical part is is going to save you in the long run because you're running a risk with the leads that you have now. Correct. Technologically, this was data that was consent captured. It was transferred efficiently. Okay. And someone received that value through that technology for that sharing. Explain the record that we have from start to finish yeah. on a lead. So here's how this works. When somebody fills out a data packet on Tartle, and maybe it's a data packet that is specifically geared towards leads, okay? The second that happens and they save and publish that data packet, consent is captured. It is ready to be purchased. They are willing to share their info to a data buyer looking to buy that information so that they can increase their book of business, okay? So after that's in there, then the buyer comes in. They're like, hey, we want to buy this from you. The person is notified that someone is requesting access to that data from that person. And then from that, if the person says yes, they get paid. How cool is it that that business is paying someone to share something so they can increase their revenues, but at the same time, you can go back to that person, which you've already qualified, ethically source the info, and they can then spend that money you just gave them right back on you. Why wouldn't you do that? Why you're actually now making them a part of the process. So it doesn't feel cold. Every single lead is now a warm lead with a pre-established relationship qualified ahead of time. We just took out 80% of the difficulty in the sales pipeline for anybody. And it is the only lead source that rewards the user that is interested in that product or service. You're not rewarding the company. No. You reward the person. Yes. That is what is key. Nobody has that metric. Nobody has that paradigm. All these blind spots, all these other services that come together and say, you know, we'll give you 20,000 leads, 100,000 leads. Of course, they're giving you bulk amount of leads. It's like the printing industry. They've squeezed each other and they're handing you a commodity. We're handing you gold. Yes. Big difference. It's a big, big difference. We're the horses in the cart bringing all the people and their data to you. Because it's not just a lead with a name, a number, and a passive aggressive may be interested in the product yeah. or service. It's a warm relationship that we've established where they've had to do, and this is really important, I want you to explain this. They've had to do work. Correct. They already are geared towards what's going to happen from filling out and sharing that data packet. They will put in work knowing that one, they will get paid and two, a relationship will come with it when they sell it. It totally changes the dynamic. The person is working to generate information. Yes. You should compensate them for that work of which you can get a larger annuity or gain from establishing that relationship. They get work and payment. The reciprocity is completely baked in. It's in perfect equilibrium because like for instance, let, let's let's say you're running uh, lead generation ads on Instagram stories. Yep, they have it baked in to where it'll put your cell, your name, and your phone number, but it, automatically. Yep. So there's no work that's done there. No, that's just somebody clicking submit and very, you know. If, so if you're passively aggressing them, you know, and you're uh, curious whether they're um, interested in uh, a mortgage, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you're a big mortgage broker, and and you look at this and, and somebody's like, yeah, I'm interested in this kind of click. There was no work being done. So if there's no it's work, too estab- simple. if there's no work established on a psychological or subconscious level, there is no established emotional relationship with what is happening. It is forgotten. So you're actually doing yourself a disservice and you're just getting a higher volume of things that really won't pay forward into what you're looking to receive and, out of them. And this is what we complain about with machine learning and data and all that. The same, and we've had so many shows on this. Correct. Is it's it's the old proverbial garbage in, garbage out. What do you think you're going to get? You're collecting this. You're collecting this data, and you have no idea what you're collecting. No. And that's the biggest problem. Like sourcing data is a, is a problem. How do we know that we're getting quality? That we're having quality data or getting quality leads? Right. 
and this is, you know, when these businesses have come to us Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, you know, we already get lead data. Oh, well, yeah, I understand you get lead data. But what is it that when you and all of the VPs in the room are looking at this, trying to make a decision on the information you've got, what is it that you always say to yourself, man, I wish we just knew this Mm -hmm. to really qualify it and get this thing over the hump? That's the sweet spot. That's where you can do that targeting, retargeting, and re-retargeting on Tartle to qualify down to the deepest, most granular Mm -hmm. depth of a human being to figure out if they truly are going to need your product or service. And the beautiful part about this too is, this is the amazing part, you can create a wish list of what you want of the customer. Yep. And we can provide that in the lead. Correct. Create a wish list. Oh, I, I wish I knew... I'm a, I, I'm a Ford, Chevy, GMC, whatever. Okay. I wish I knew, um, you know, what their trade-in was. Yeah. I wish I could get that. You know, I wish I could, I wish I could ha- understand, are they a month out from purchasing a vehicle, six months out? You know, I mean, th- there's so many different scenarios. How much of your free cash? Do yeah, you I wish I knew. Release? Yeah, I wish I knew whether they were, you know, a range of the credit score. I wish I knew all these different things because then that's going to give me the the best qualified yeah. Lead. Because you can sit there and have an yes. irrefutable educational conversation with yes. perse- perfect reciprocity between you and the customer. Well, and, and, and this exchange, and this is what Turtle's free marketplace is. Maybe we can, I want to get philosophical just real quick and then we'll close mm-hmm. for people to understand this. Because I want people to understand the base of Turtle and what this marketplace is. Um, and we, we like you said, we've kind of had companies coming to us and wanting leads. So you know, Tartle's not a lead. No, it's just one other thing that can now happen. And it's completely ethically designed. Yes. And and so kind of give people the understanding when they team up with Tartle yep. and they become a data champion mm-hmm. uh, as a buyer of leads or a buyer of data, however you want to look at it. Um, how, how do they team up and what is helping humanity in that process as them as a company? That, that's great. A buyer comes in, they say, you know, I really want to be a champion for this. I really want to take the next step. I want to reduce my risk. I want to qualify what I'm doing. I want to stop guessing and I want to start knowing. That happens when these businesses come to us and say, I want to establish a relationship with my end user. I want to do that. And I want to know that the money I spend to get that information for them is directly uplifting them. Not going to some company, I'm really not sure how they do things, what's going on here, Were there ethics involved? Is there technology to support it? There's too many unknowns. When you come to Tartle to use us as a bridge towards that other person on the other side that you want to have a conversation with, that's how you become that champion. You establish a relationship, you meet them where they are, and you afford them economic opportunity for the work they put in. It's a real exchange. It's not just no work that didn't happen. No one's really conscious of what's occurring. It's happening too quickly. No, there was time, there was attention and there was value and Mm, that value was exchanged. And so when you do that, you are uplifting those people who need to be uplifted. And if you establish that bond, establish that relationship with the human being on the other side, your probability of your sale or your product or service being enhanced is far, far, far beyond where it was before. So Tartle, is the future of leads. Correct. Oh, and here's the cool part. You decide what the price of the lead is. I don't, before we even hang up, <laughs> this is the game changer. It's not like, oh, you come to Charlie, yeah, we'll tell you how much the lead costs. No, 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 no. That's for you, your budget, and what you want to do. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect. 